Hi, my name is Patrick, and this is our attempt to make a sword for this year's Cast and Steel competition. Now I say attempt because we don't necessarily have the sword in hand as of now, but we are in the process of making the sword currently. Now before I get into anything else, I would love to thank our sponsors Acrocast and Eagle Precision uh, for sponsoring our sword project. It took a lot of hard work and a lot of their time and resources to help us out, and I would love to thank them so much for all the hard work they did for us. Thank you so much. And now let's get into how we made our sword. Now in this year's casting competition, we need to figure out how to make a sword using more modern methods rather than uh, historically accurate methods. The historically accurate way to make the sword would be to make a mold and then cast it in sand. Our team is going a different route than that, instead we are going to go with the investment casting process. If you're unaware of what the investment casting process is, is where you take a model and you dip it into some aggregate and pull it out, dip it into another slurry and then keep building up layers until you have this mold. Once you have the mold, you can then melt out the model, which is generally made out of a wax or a plastic material, leaving you with a negative cavity. This negative cavity will then be filled with any sort of material that you choose. Now, one of our main focuses for this entire challenge was to make sure that we had a mold that was accurate to what we designed. Our team tried its best to make sure that we prioritized the mold over anything else sort of like historical accuracy or design. Now, this is Richard. Richard is what I would call a genius. He knows a lot about the subject and he's willing to share that information with us. Richard is in charge of this company named Acrocast. Acrocast is a company that is generally known for its investment casting process. As we were meeting him, he showed us all of the importance of what it takes to cast something using investment casting. He showed us the screw bar making of the models using wax and uh, the entire process of what it takes to make this mold. As we told him about our project, he had a lot of insight on what we needed to do in order to get this project done. He gave insight on the material that we should be using, and he told us what we needed to do in order to compensate for the blade edge. The blade edge information was very useful because it's something that our team could have had an oversight with. So after our talk with Richard, we figured out what we needed to do. After this, our team did a little bit more research on how to design this sword. We looked into historical designs, and we also looked into what makes a sword effective. And from there, we moved on to design this. The sword you are currently looking at is the 3D model that we used in Katia. Once the 3D design was done, we then sent the CAD model over to Thomas. Now Thomas is a wonderful guy. He works at Express Prototyping that 3D prints anything. So we reached out to him and asked him to see if he can print it in anything that would be easy to get out of a mold such as our project. Thankfully, Thomas has worked with this kind of process and he knew the exact plastic that we need to use, PMMA. Now what you're looking at is a PMA model of our sword. We then send that model over to Richard so he can investment cast it. Now while we waited for our 3D prints, we then sent our CAD file over to the casting company so that they can have a simulation of the port. Now one thing that we did need to add to our model was the sprue bar and cup. Now what you're currently looking at is a simulation of our port. The simulation also calculated where the shrinker could possibly be. Now mind you, the simulation isn't perfect, but it does give us a general idea of what the pour is gonna look like. Now here's where things get a little tricky. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, we could not get this casting pour to work. There's too many scheduling issues and our times to cast just wouldn't work for us. Now this wasn't on our team and it wasn't on Acrocast, all right? Acrocast was wonderful to work with. They were still able to dip our models into the aggregate, creating those molds. Unfortunately, we just couldn't get the pour done. Thankfully, we do have another sponsor, Eagle Precisions. Eagle Precisions is a company out in Muskegon who's allowed us to use their facilities to pour the metal. Thankfully, Eagle Precisions does investment casting. Now, at the moment, we still don't have the swords in hand or poured. But once we do, here's the process of how we would be able to finish the sword. Once the swords are poured, we're then going to have them annealed so we can work with them. Once the swords are annealed, we're then gonna have them in shop so we can then finish them. The swords are going to be finished with an angle grinder that has a flap disc and a polishing wheel that will then give us a near finish. Now one final time, I would love to thank Agricast and Eagle Precisions for sponsoring us. Thank you so much for all your hard work that you did for us. It literally would not have been possible without you two. And another thanks goes out to Thomas for the 3D printing. Thank you so much for printing our models. It was a lifesaver. And also, I would love to thank the Steel Founder Society for having us participate in this competition. Uh, thank you so much for putting this on. It really was a blast. Thank you so much.